Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, today we will learn the design of boost converter. Just to make you recall, in the previous lecture, we studied the boost converter. The configuration is given in this figure. Uh, when the switch was closed, uh, what happened that the output voltage, uh, the uh, inductor voltage VL was equals to Vs and the time for which the switch was closed was dt. Similarly, the time for which the switch was open was one minus d time, the time period capital T. And for this time period, the inductor voltage VL was equals to Vs minus V out. So if you recall, uh, Delta IL closed was Vs dt upon L and Delta IL open was Vs minus V out upon L. So using these Delta IL open and Delta IL closed, what we did, we basically added the two uh, change of currents and since the total change was zero, so we got the expression of output voltage V out as equals to Vs upon 1 minus T. And now using this equation, we can easily identify that for uh, a duty cycle of 0 0.5, we are getting an output voltage that is twice than the input voltage Vs. So we concluded that uh, in the boost converter, the output voltage is basically multiple of the supply or the input voltage Vs. As we know that uh, we basically established the uh, expression for IL using equation 6.28. Sim similarly, I maximum was represented by equation 6.29 and I minimum was represented by equation 6.30. Afterwards, what we did, we basically used the concept of continuous conduction mod that is the minimum inductor current must be zero or positive. So using this thing, what we did, we basically derived the expression for the minimum inductance that is required for continuous conduction mod, and it was represented by equation 6.32. Similarly, using the concept of minimum ripple voltages, what we did, we basically uh, said that the uh, change in uh, charge delta Q is equal to C times change in voltage or the ripple voltage delta V naught. And since uh, the change in charge that is delta Q is represented by the area of this rectangle, using that expression of the rectangle uh, area and dt, we basically establish the formula for percentage ripple that is delta V naught upon V naught and it was equal to D upon RCF. And from this equation 6.34, if we make C the subject of the equation, that is capacitance the subject of the equation, so we get the value of C that basically ensures a standard percentage ripple that we may maintain. Uh, finally, uh, we said that the ripple voltage due to uh, the equivalent series resistance will be represented by delta IC time RC, and it was the same at, as it was in the buck converter. Now coming to some of the design problems of the boost converter. So coming to the first problem, they are saying that the boost converter that will have an output voltage of 30 volt from a 12 volt source. So designed for continuous inductor current and an output ripple voltage of less than 1%. So what we need to do that we are to design this boost converter. Why it is boost converter? It is very simple. The output voltage is 30 volts while the input or the source voltage is 12 volts. So since the output voltage is more than the input voltage, we can easily uh, identify that it is a boost converter. 
Now, for the design procedure, first of all, what we will do, we will basically calculate the duty cycle of uh, the, uh, the boost converter. So if we arrange that output voltage equation and make D the subject of the equation, then D will be equals to one minus Vs upon V out. So since Vs is 12 volts and V out is 30 volts, so we can easily identify that the duty cycle is one minus 12 upon 30, that is 0 0.6. Since duty cycle is a ratio, so it does not have any uh, unit. Now, to calculate the minimum inductance value, we will use the same equation that we derived earlier in our previous lecture. So since we know the duty cycle now, and we are given uh, the values of resistance, we assume that the frequency is 25 kilohertz. So what happens that we easily uh, calculate the value of inductance as 96 micro Henry. Now to calculate the inductor current, we will use equation 6.28 and equation 6.25. Uh, so IL is basically Vs upon 1 minus D whole squared times the resistance or the load resistance. Since everything is known, we can easily identify or calculate that IL is 1.5 ampere. Similarly, since delta IL is basically Vs dt upon L, so delta IL upon 2 will be equals to Vs dt upon 2L. And hence we calculate that delta IL by 2 is equals to 1.2 ampere. As we already know that I maximum is basically IL plus delta IL upon 2. So it will be 2.7 ampere. Similarly, I minimum is basically IL minus delta IL upon 2. So it will be 1.5 minus 1.2 ampere. So hence minimum. Uh, I minimum is basically 0 0.3 ampere. Now, if someone asks that what is the average current, so it will be 2.7 plus 0 0.3 whole divided by 2, that is 1.5 ampere. Now, to maintain a ripple voltage of 1%, what we need to calculate is the value of capacitance. So we will use that equation 6.35. And since we are given that delta V0 upon V0 is 1%, that is 1 upon 100. So we will uh, use 0 0.01 instead of delta V0 upon V0. Every other thing is known. And hence we conclude that the capacitance that is required for maintaining a 1% ripple voltage is basically 48 micro. Ferrot. So that was all about this uh, design problem. Now, now coming to another problem that is example 6.5 of your uh, chapter 6. So they are saying that a boost converter is required to have an output voltage of 8 volt and a supply load current of 1 ampere. So this time they have given us uh, the supply current as 1 ampere. The input voltage is given in basically a range of values that it is between 2.7 to 4.2. So uh, what we need to do, basically we need to determine the value of inductor such that the variation in inductor current is more than 40% of the average current. Or we need to calculate the value of capacitor for which the ripple is not more than 2%. So to determine the maximum capacitor equivalent resistance, that maintains this 2% ripple. Uh, so we will start from the first, uh, the very first step that we did in the previous example, that first of all, we will calculate the duty cycle. Since the output voltage is 2.7 to 4.2, so first of all, we will calculate it for 2.7. So for 2.7, the duty cycle is 0 0.663. Now, for this, uh, duty cycle, the load current will be V out into I out upon Vs. So hence it will be 2.96 ampere. Now for this load current, we are allowed a 40% variation. So 40% of 2.96 is 1.19 ampere. So delta IL will be 1.19 ampere. Now using this value of delta IL and the value of Vs that we took initially as 2.7 volts. We calculate the value of inductance, which is the minimum value, and it is 7.5 micro Henry. Similarly, we will repeat the same procedure 
taking Vs as the higher value, that is 4.2 volt. Basically, they gave us two uh, uh, different values. Basically, uh, supply voltage may be in between 2.7 to 4.2 volt. So first calculation was considering that the supply voltage is 2.7 and the other calculation will be taking, taking supply voltage as 4.2 volts. Now, for 4.2 volt, the duty cycle is not 0.663, rather it is 0.475. We will again calculate the IL and it is 1.90 ampere. Now, delta IL uh, is calculated using 40% of 1.9 and it is 0.762 ampere. Now, with the new delta IL and the new VS that is 4.2 volts, we will again calculate an inductance. So the second inductance is 13.1 microhenry. Now the first inductance was 7.5 microhenry and the second inductance was 13.1 microhenry and both are the minimum values that may be utilized. So in such a case, if we want to satisfy both conditions, we will take the higher value of the inductor. So we will take 13.1 microhenry to satisfy both conditions of the design requirement. Now, for uh, a ripple voltage of 2%, that is delta V0 upon V0 equals to 2%, that is 2 upon 100, that is to 0 0.02, we will calculate the capacitance value using equation 6.35 as we did in the previous example. So it comes as 20.7 microfarad. So uh, finally, we need to calculate the value of uh, delta IL for this uh, thing, so VSD upon LF. So it is basically 2.7 multiplied by 0 0.663 over the value of the L we used, uh, we basically finalized after calculating the two different values of L, and hence we will get the new delta IL. Now for IL maximum, it will be IL plus delta IL by two. So we get a value of 3.30 as the IL maximum and 2.28 as IL minimum. Now finally, to calculate the series equivalent resistance of the capacitance, we basically need delta V0, so it is IL maximum into RC. Or since they basically allowed us 0 0.02 of the output voltage, so since the output voltage was 8 volts, so 0 0.02 into 8, we get 0 0.16 as delta V0. So 0 0.16 volt is equal to 3.3 into RC. To calculate RC, we will make RC the subject of the equation, and hence we will get 0 0.16 divided by 3.3 ampere as the value of the series equivalent resistance of the capacitance. So it is 48 milli ohm. In practice, the capacitor that has an ESR value of 48 milli ohm or less could have a capacitance value much larger than 20.7 microfarad as calculated. Now, coming to another design criteria of the boost converter, uh, this design criteria is basically inductor resistance. Uh, while uh, performing the buck converter, we basically uh, did not uh, took this uh, thing very serious. Uh, what, why we did this thing? Because the existence of a small inductor resistance does not substantially change the analysis of the buck converter. Uh, so for the boost converter, uh, this resistance affects the performance. So therefore, we are considering this equation. So from equation 6.37, as we already know, that the output voltage of a boost converter is Vs upon 1 minus duty cycle. Now, if we consider that the series resistance of the inductance is RL, and we uh, basically assume that the supplied power Vs is basically 
uh, compensating the output power and the power that is consumed in the resistive part of the inductance, then we can write this uh, equation 6.38. And now if the diode current ID is represented by 6.39, that is IL times one minus T. So what we can do if we substitute this diode current uh, in equation 6.38, we basically get this equation 6.40. Now, if we solve uh, 6.40 uh, by substituting IL in equation 6.4, we get Vs equals to V out RL upon R1 minus D plus V naught times 1 minus D. Now, the conclusion is basically given equation 6.42. That is, if we introduce a, an inductor having a resistance of RL, then this factor 1 plus RL upon R into 1 minus D square is basically an additional factor that basically uh, affects the output voltage. Now, if you see this figure 6.10a, so they are representing that for an ideal situation, how this uh, V out upon Vs behaves and for a non-ideal position uh, uh, situation, how this V out upon Vs, that is uh, ratio of output and input voltage uh, is basically uh, affected. Similarly, in terms of efficiency, if we want to uh, identify that how it affects the efficiency, it can be uh, considered using this graph, uh, that is the graph 6.10b. Uh, now, mathematically, we all know that the efficiency is P out upon P out plus P loss. So if we put in the expressions for P out and P loss. So the efficiency uh, formula is also affect this uh, is also affected by this expression one plus RL. So this uh, is basically uh, uh, the factor that the efficiency of boost converter decreases with. So these were some uh, consideration that we uh, do while uh, taking the boost converter into consideration. So the important thing that uh, for a boost con converter, the resistance of inductance is also important and it affects adversely the efficiency of the boost converter. So we may use equation 6.3, 6.43 and 6.44 to consider the effects of this series resistance. So inshallah in the next lecture, we will uh, uh, basically uh, start the buck boost converter. So till then, take care and Allah Hafiz.